Here is the ancient knowledge of the Indian 22 Shrutis. We all know the basic seven notes. C, D, E, F, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, written as the Roman 1, 2, 3, 4, and in India as Sa, Re, Ga, Ma, Padhani. We also know the varieties of the 12 notes. Now, Shrutis are a further expansion of the 12 notes. How do you know where they are? Do you mean to say that we just split existing 12 notes into two more equal parts? No, 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 no. To understand this, we have to go through a bit of science and maths. A bit of it, not too much. I'll try and make it as simple as possible. Let's begin at the beginning of sound. When any sound is produced, how does it travel? How do we hear it? It's like this. When a pebble is thrown in the water, small waves are created. The first one is the strongest one and all others are weaker in succession. Just like that, when a sound is made, small waves are created in the air. The first one is the strongest one and all others are weaker in succession. In the language of sound, these waves are called harmonics. So, every sound has a main wave and accompanying waves. All together we hear as one sound. The main wave, that's the lowest sounding wave, is heard as a musical tone. The rest of them give a timbre or a character to the sound by which we can identify the source whether it's a violin, piano, drums, human voice, etc. How are these waves measured? It's measured by frequency. What is a frequency? This is the number of waves produced in one second as measured in hertz. Let's see the entire range of frequency and it's measured in hertz. So did you see the entire range? This frequency a thousand hertz sounds like this. This one is 5000 hertz. So now we have already understood that when any sound is produced it contains harmonics. Now let's see at what distance are the harmonics. If the biggest one is at 100 hertz, then the smaller ones would be at 200, 300, 400 and 500 hertz. This is what happens naturally. What are the notes at these distances of 100, 200, 300, 400 and 500 hertz in the musical octave? If we take the first harmonic to be the sa, then the rest of them are the upper sharja, higher pancham, still higher sharja and still higher gandhar. The first harmonic, sharja, first, say at 100 hertz. Then the second harmonic would be the upper sharja, upper sa in the second octave, which comes at 200 hertz. The third harmonic would be the higher pancham in the second octave, the fifth, which comes at 300 hertz. The fourth harmonic would be still higher sharja in the third octave which comes at 400 hertz. And the fifth harmonic would be a still higher gandhar in the third octave again, the third which comes at 500 hertz. Beyond the fifth harmonic, frequencies get feeble and are not heard. If we strike an open sound, then the harmonics are sa, tarsa, tarpa, ati tarsa, and ati targa. And in this, we've got the positions of three notes sa, ga, and pa. As we can see here, 
when the frequency that's hertz doubles the pitch is an octave higher if we are to bring the position of ga and pa to octave 1 to the first octave we have to divide pa by 2 because it is in the second octave therefore 300 by 2 is 150 similarly we have to divide ga by 4 because it is in the third octave so 500 divided by 4 equals 125 so bringing them in the same octave in the first octave the distance is sharja at 100 Gandhar at 125 and Pancham at 150. Therefore, naturally, the positions of Sa, Ga, and Pa provided by nature is in the proportion of 100 is to 125 is to 150. Therefore, all musical notes with these ratios or proportions in between sound pleasant. The Indian 22 Shruti system. is structured on the basis of the above natural harmonics now let's look at the positions of the 12 notes as we hear them on pianos or keyboards today they are tuned to the equitempered scale which basically divides the entire octave into equal sections of 100 cents cents are commonly used in most music softwares today to tune the notes sa at 0 Komal Ray at 100, Shuddha Ray at 200, Komal Ga at 300, Shuddha Ga at 400, and so on. This was a convenient method that was employed some time ago, and is widely used even now to tune pianos and keyboards. Let's compare the Ga and Pa positions in both the tunings. In the equitempered scale, Ga is at 400 cents, but the proportion of sa to ga becomes 100 is to 126 therefore it does not sound perfect when the proportion of sa to ga is 100 is to 125 according to natural harmonics it sounds perfect similarly in the equitempered scale pa is at 700 cents but the proportion of sa to pa is 100 is to 149.83 therefore it does not sound perfect when the proportion of sa to pa is 100 is to 150 according to natural harmonics it sounds perfect therefore on the scale of cents perfect ga is 14 cents lower and perfect pa is Two cents higher than its place given in the equitempered tuning. The major chord became imperfect. What should have sounded like this sounded like this. All pianos in the world today are tuned to the equitempered scale. The EQ tuning, therefore, is not suitable to Indian classical music. that is why the 22 shruti tuning system is the base for indian classical music now we must understand that the purpose of all art forms in india is to aid the human to evolve spiritually and for the soul to be one with the universe be in a permanent feel good state music in india has the same purpose to create a feel good state Since music in India is based on the principle of consonance the notes used in a raga have to be in perfect consonance with each other there's a term called raga in indian music what is a raga raga is a combination of different notes which is expanded into a performance just like we have 12 basic colors to make a painting we have 12 basic notes to make a raga So just like different colors make different paintings different notes make different ragas which sound different from each other the scale of a raga is made up of 5 6 7 notes ascending and descending and we can have the following possibilities 
ascending five, descending five, five, six, five, seven, six ascending, five descending, six, 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 seven, and seven ascending, five descending, seven ascending, six descending, and seven and seven. Let me show you how different combinations sound different. I'll just show it to you. Here's an example of five notes ascending and five notes descending. This is Rag Gupal. Sounds different than This is Malcolm's. Let's choose a raga in which we go up six notes and come back seven. Rag Todi. So each of them sound very different from each other. If we calculate the permutations and combinations of all these, these will lead to many, many ragas, but not all of them would be pleasing to the ear. So about 300 ragas are popularly performed by most musicians, which are consonant. Now the notes are decided, but raga is not only a mere scale. There are certain phrases created from those notes which form the structure of a raga. These key phrases give a personality to the raga. Like in cases of certain ragas with the same notes, it is the phrasing that differentiates them. For instance, the creator has made all of us similar. Each of us have two eyes, one nose, two ears, one mouth, two hands, two legs, etc. We are all the same. But certain features are different. Someone has blue eyes, a big nose, a huge forehead, long fingers. And that's what makes us different. That's what gives us our identity and individuality. Just like that. All ragas have selected nodes which form the scale and define phrases which give the raga its identity. Here are a couple of examples. So let's take up a raga called Rag Bageshri. These are the notes. And the phrasings would be Yaman, Rag Yaman, sounds very different. The notes are and the phrases, the key phrases. Now let's relate this to consonants. Now there's one more rule in Indian classical music. The notes of a raga in accordance to the defined phrases have to be in perfect consonant relationship with each other. For instance, rag yaman has the following notes. Let's hear it on the keyboard. Now when we play the same thing on an equal tempered tuned keyboard, look as to how it's simply impossible to bring the perfect consonants in the EQ tuning.
Here is where comes in the use of Shrutis. The Shruti points are in perfect consonance and in perfect consonant relationship with each other. To sum it up, we have the basic seven notes which expand into 12 notes which are further expanded into 22 shrutis. When choosing notes or swaras or tones for any raga, a further detail of shruti or microtones is also chosen. These would be in perfect relationship according to the phrasings of the raga. When a raga is performed, sung or played in perfect shruti pitching or tuning, the effects of such music on the mind, body and soul are astounding. It sends us into a state of bliss, a heavenly feeling encompasses and gives the performer and the audience an out-of-this-world experience. Feels too good.